Uh, generally, these uh, subwoofer installs are like three steps, three easy steps. First step is run your power. Second step is tap an audio signal to the amp. And then the third step is hook up a remote switch. Three easy steps. I'm going to walk you through it on the Infinity Q50. Sit tight. All right, what's going on, y'all? So today, I am going to be installing a subwoofer on my Infinity Q50. Uh, so I've been really pleased with this car. I've had it for about a year. Uh, I've done some subtle modifications. I think my whole theme, if I were to sum it up, would be kind of like a subtle aggression, right? I'm damn near 40. I'm a dad, um, but I still love my car. So I've got kind of a, a dad stand that I've hooked up and made semi-aggressive, but something that's always been lacking has been kind of a lower end in the uh, audio system. Not that I'm saying that it's bad. I don't want to piss off any of the Infinity fanboys. The woofers in the doors, there's a small sub on the rear deck of the car, but it just lacks that punch that you get. An aftermarket amp and a dedicated subwoofer. And once you get accustomed to that, and then you jump into a car that doesn't have it, you really kind of miss it. So for this, I'm just going for OEM plus. I'm not looking to win any SPL competitions. I'm not looking to do any hair tricks or anything like that. I'm not looking to crack any pavement. Although I can see the appeal of these hair tricks. I think I just came in my panties. <laughs> but not this time. This is this is not fitting my lifestyle right now. Just OEM plus. So it was really important for me to kind of re retain some trunk space. So we already know that the trunk on the Q is kind of small. What I was planning on doing was maybe putting something in the spare tire well. I did that on my previous car and it worked out really well, but it turns out that the spare tire is pretty narrow. So it would have been real difficult for me to fit, you know, a decent size 12 in there. So what I decided to do was just kind of put something uh, along that back wall, make it stand out about 20 inches or so from that back seat and use the rest of the space um, for just cargo. So now that I understood the dimensions that I wanted, I started doing a little research and and I landed on this kit. It's uh, by SCAR and it comes with the subwoofer, the box, the amp, and the entire wiring kit. And the reviews were pretty awesome for it. So I clicked buy now and uh, a couple days later, it showed up at my front door. Alright, so I'm ready to get started. Uh, generally, these uh, subwoofer installs are like three steps, three easy steps. First step is run your power. Second step is tap an audio signal to the amp. And then the third step is hook up a remote switch. Uh, so the amp only gets power when the car is switched on. Three easy steps. I'm going to walk you through it on the Infinity Q50. Sit tight. So it actually turns out that the amp really fit just perfectly into, uh, it kind of looks like a, a, I don't know if it's like a toolkit holder or whatever, it fit perfectly in there. So that's exactly where I mounted the amp uh, in my Q50. It's on the passenger side. There's a perfect ground right there uh, behind it. So it makes sense to run the power straight from the battery on the passenger side all the way to the back passenger side of the vehicle. My next step is gonna to be to tap a power signal to run all the way back to the car uh, from the battery to the amplifier that's gonna power that subwoofer, right? So in order to do that, I need to get through the firewall. And to do that, I need to remove all these little uh, clasps here. 
and get access to the battery. And then right behind the battery is a, a little grommet that you can pierce a hole in and run your power wire through the firewall. So I just use a little utility knife to cut like a little one centimeter hole into that grommet. And now I'm just pushing my power wire through. And I didn't need to put it in any direction or anything. Uh, I think this access um, just kind of guides the wire through the firewall. So you'll see it in a second. Uh, the wire just starts coming out underneath the uh, glove compartment inside the cabin of the vehicle. Perfect. So now I'm able to pull it through and basically just keep running it back through to the back of the car. So I had to pop off some of these plastic panels. Uh, so I had to pop off some of these plastic panels. And you actually see once you pop them off, you know, you just got to give it a little tug. But once you do, there's actually a little channel and there's already some wiring running past there. So I just put my power um, cable kind of in line with that wire and just kept running it through the back. If you ever run into anything, uh, just pop the plastic panel off and keep uh, pushing it through. Um, I didn't show it here, but um, if you ever run out of wire, just go back up to where the, it's coming in through the firewall and feed yourself a bit more wire and you can usually just you know pull it straight through. Okay, so now I am in the back seat. Uh, I continue running that power cable all the way through. Uh, what I did was remove the lower half of the seat just so I can keep getting access towards the back here. Um, I didn't really want to remove this because it was a lot of work and I was losing sunlight. I considered putting it through the ski pass here, but I didn't want any wires showing. So I actually just lifted the, the back of the seat a little bit and I found a little hole in, in the back. Uh, you're not going to be able to see it uh, without uh, a light, unfortunately, but there's a hole back there. I just ran the power wire through and that allowed me to just pull it right from the trunk and, and hook it right up to the amp. Okay, so now that we've got power and ground established and hooked up to our amp, it's time to get an audio signal uh, that will run to the amp and that will uh, be the base signal for our subwoofer. So what I'm doing right now is removing all these uh, little clasps that give us access to the roof of the trunk and that is where the factory subwoofer as well as the factory amp are housed. Now plugged into the factory subwoofer was a single clip and that clip has two wires going into it. A red for positive and a blue for negative. And these are the signals that you're going to want to tap to either run directly to your amp if your amp takes speaker level inputs or connect to a line out converter like I did. Alright, so what we can see here is that I have now tapped the positive signal for my subwoofer to the positive from the line out converter and then the same for the negative so I just ran them in parallel right because this is a two level or two uh, two channel line output converter I'm taking those two channels and I'm just running them mono style in parallel um, to the line output converter. So that's all set. I could probably hook up that factory subwoofer if I wanted to, but I'm just gonna leave it disconnected just so I can see what's going on. I'll let this pop out. I'm gonna close it back up. Okay, now our last step is to tap the remote signal. So here we go again with the factory amp. There's gonna be two wiring harnesses hanging off the back of it. What you wanna do is disconnect the white wiring harness and the bottom row, fifth port in, is gonna be a lavender cable. That's the one that you're gonna to wanna to tap and that will be a perfect remote signal for your amp. 
that's going to ensure that the amp only gets power when the car radio is switched on. Okay, so here we see the finished product. So I ran all the wiring from the amp to the subwoofer and I kind of tucked the wires. I can do a little bit better tucking it. Um, but as you can see, the subwoofer sticks out about 20, 21 inches uh, into the uh, trunk. So I still have a decent amount of trunk space left. Uh, I can hide these wires just a, a little bit better, but for, for the most part, we're, we're done here. Um, and this is how it looks. So let me show you where I've tucked the amp. So it's right here under this mat, so it is accessible uh, when I want to start tuning. Um, I kind of carved out um, a bit of the foam so that the amp actually sits flush in this tray here. Um, and so, you know, once I put the mat down, it sits flush, the, the, it's completely uh, level. And if I were to put any weight on it, you know, I'm, I'm comfortable that the amp won't move and obviously my wiring won't move. So I've never blown a sub before, but I, no matter what, I always do sort of a break-in period where I don't push the subs really hard. Um, but even with all my gains set to zero fresh out the box, everything set to minimum on uh, my stereo, this thing already like beats. I can't wait to, to turn it up. Let's just do a little, little test real quick. Keep in mind too, this is also like low, low bit rate music too. This isn't even the, the good stuff, but I mean, enough said, like, uh, I can't wait till this breaks in. I can't wait to turn this up. I already feel it a little bit inside my chest and there's there's nothing going on in here. It's barely even moving the, the needle, but it's hitting all the ranges just right. It's that low end that I was looking for. And uh, again, I can't wait until this is, is really tuned in uh, for my car. Thanks for checking me out. This is a brand new channel. I'm planning on having a lot more automotive content. So if this video added value, for you, please consider liking and subscribing.